It has now been confirmed, and the documents have been released by the Electronic Privacy Information Center, that f since 2005, but they put them in in 2002, at five airports, Boston, Logan first, that were the beta test, that they knew it was high levels of radiation and they knew it was going to make people sick, not just the travelers, because you, you don't, you're not in there eight hours a day like TSA, but the federal workers. And it turns out for years they've been covering up at the airports the massive increase in cancers and cancer clusters. This is huge news. And uh, they fire, and they go, this is completely illegal, uh, because if you're concerned about your work environment and, and then they fire you because no radiation tests are being done, there's not a radiation control officer, they're not calibrating them every month as they're supposed to do, they, they hid this info from Congress for a year, Epic was able to finally get it foyered and released. This is bone chilling, bone chilling about the nature of the New World Order, that they knew, they're like, well, these things will release radiation. So what? So what if it kills the workers? Just like they told people, oh, the dust is safe to breathe. The asbestos isn't a problem at ground zero and said, don't wear respirators because it'll scare the public and we can't open Wall Street again. And then they tried to block for nine years. We finally got it. Uh, Health care for the, for the heroes of 9-11. Incredible. This shows the mindset of the cold-blooded people that run society, how ruthless, how cutthroat they are. So no wonder the EPA just said, you know, we're going to raise safe levels of radiation between 100 and 100,000 times, depending on the isotope, what we previously said was safe. Oh, radiation's going way up because of Fukushima and other big disasters like Los Alamos facility with fires all over their nuclear testing area. And that's in the news, by the way. I can take you to mainstream news admitting danger of radiation release. Residents fear radioactive smoke. You bet. I mean, I, I may have to move to the southern hemisphere as much as happening. Because this is all going on in the northern hemisphere. And they're telling me radiation's safe. They don't even tell folks to you know, stay away from the milk and the rest of it. But I digress here. Uh, that's uh, Yahoo News reporting on that. Uh, AP. Now... I've had a chance to hear a lady and read her writings, and I think she's one of the most eloquent people to kind of chronicle all of what the TSA is doing. And they, and they play arrogant games, like they said, in uh, November and then again in April of this year that, oh, we've stopped groping kids 12 and under. They never stopped. They said, again, we're stopping groping. It's a military tactic to claim they're stopping something when it's continuing. Then they said, we didn't make that lady take her diaper off. We said, take it off or you can't fly. It's all these semantical games. Uh, so there's calls for Pistol, Pistoli to, to step down. Uh, Becky Akers is a journalist who writes for Lou Rockwell, American Daily, uh, Herald, Campaign for Liberty, The New American, The Independent Review, uh, The Freeman, Barron's, The Christian Science Monitor, The Washington, uh, New York, Denver Post, Ottawa Citizen, Military History, American History, and many other publications and websites. And she's just absolutely amazing uh, the way she breaks down the, and, and chronicles these people. And we're going to have her for the rest of the hour. We're going to break here in a few minutes. Uh, but, Becky, uh, please, you've got the floor for the next 30 minutes or so. Then I want to open the phones up for victims of TSA to call in and talk to you. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231. But, Becky, uh, what got you on the trail of the TSA? Well, Alex, I have to first of all thank you and the other activists that turned out in Austin, and I just loved your demonstration at the State House. That was just wonderful. So I was cheering you on from in front of my computer screen. Um, I hate the TSA with every fiber of my being, and probably the reason I most hated it is its complete unconstitutionality. This is something that the founders could not in their most horrible nightmares ever have conceived that American citizens would be sexually assaulted at the airport by their government before they simply get on a plane. This is the very definition of tyranny. This is outrageous. At no point in world history has any regime, no matter how brutal or totalitarian, ever sexually assaulted mass numbers of its citizens. This is completely unprecedented, and it is to our shame that this is currently going on. Do you agree with my analysis that it's about federalizing not just the airports, but the streets of America and breaking our will, that this is prisoner concentration camp induction training? Oh, absolutely. And in fact, anytime I hear somebody say that the TSA doesn't work, 
I want to correct the person and say, actually, it works just fine. It's doing precisely what it was set up to do. It's quashing dissent. Just go to the airport and watch people in line, how they keep their eyes down. They don't give any lip to the screeners, no matter how abusive the screeners become. All they want to do is get through the checkpoint and onto their flight. So TSA succeeds marvelously at what it's really all about, and that is subjugating us. Does it succeed as security? Absolutely not. In fact, TSA is downright dangerous. And that's something all of us should continue to hype and to study because polls consistently show that those Americans who still are in favor of the TSA hold that position solely because they've swallowed the propaganda that it protects us and that there are terrorists behind every bush and we need the TSA to route them out. Actually, TSA has never in anywhere in the world uncovered a single terrorist uh, in the absence of actual bad Maggie, guys. stay there. Let's break down their crimes, their activities. Let's chronicle it all on the other side. We'll be right back. Becky Akers, syndicated columnist, writes for some of the biggest publications in the country. This is a short segment, ma'am, long segment coming up. You've got the floor. Chronicle and, and break down what they're doing, you know, the whole constellation of abuse. Well, TSA's excuse has always been that it protects American aviation. But actually, if you look at their charter, they are set up to invade all American transportation. It doesn't just end with planes. So that's why we've been seeing them out in buses and uh, Amtrak. As you mentioned, they're going to school proms. They're also at political rallies. And that is, is especially chilling when you think that uh, Obama and um, McCain both, when they were campaigning, TSA was at their rally screening people before they were allowed inside. So what are we looking for in that instance? Are we looking for dissidents? Are we going to keep people out of rallies who disagree with the candidates? Um, and this is, in fact, the whole purpose of the TSA is to intimidate and bully us so that we no longer protest government's atrocities. And that will go for any atrocity, not just what they're doing at airports, but when they bomb innocent people overseas, because we don't want to be on the no-fly list, we don't say anything. We certainly don't write letters to the editor, since we are very easy to track with our name and city then. Um, this is why governments have always coveted. They very seldom realize the sort of totalitarian power TSA currently wields, and that is as long as you can search people, as long as you can intimidate and bully them anywhere, anytime, uh, you, you have enormous power over them. Not only can you confiscate weapons, which is what TSA does at airports, uh, so that they cannot rebel, but you can also have them so afraid of the humiliation of a public search because there you are singled out in front of everybody. Everyone's thinking, my goodness, what, what did that miscreant do? And you're probably thinking, goodness, what did I do? Because everybody gives the benefit of doubt to the government agents, never to their victims. So you fear that public humiliation, and there's also the very real threat of bodily harm. Uh, a lot of what the TSA is doing as far as groping people is hurting people. There's the example of the uh, man who was suffering from bladder cancer and recovering. He wore a stoma bag. He repeatedly warned the TSA's thugs that his bag would break. They'd break the seal on it if they continued groping him, and they did so deliberately so that he was soaked in his own urine before he got on his flight. Uh, that's just one story out of hundreds I could recite about the TSA's calculated cruelty to anyone that they encounter. It doesn't matter how old you are. As we saw with the woman in the wheelchair, 95 years old, and the TSA is humiliating this woman. It doesn't matter how young you are. They're groping three-year-old children, uh, and this is pedophilism. Anywhere else, why isn't it at the airport? So the whole well, I mean, uh, they're taking the diapers off one-year-old babies, and, and just to add here, uh, the White House has said they want a no-gun-buy list where they just put you on list and can't buy guns without a judge, jury, or charge. You can't get off the list. And they're admitting TSA, I saw Ridge say this eight years ago, you'll have to get government authorization to have a job, and now they're starting that with the unions where they run it through the TSA to have a job at a warehouse. This is a total uh, internal passport takeover system. They know exactly what they're doing. Absolutely. That is the TSA's whole purpose is to 
uh, foist a police state on Americans under the excuse of we're protecting you. You know, it's very, very scary when you witness these atrocities. There's, there's virtually nobody in the country that isn't outraged by the treatment that Mrs. Reppert, the 95-year-old survivor of cancer uh, who's, who has leukemia, the, the abuse that this woman took at the airport, everybody except the TSA is outraged by this. And TSA's response, we followed protocol. I mean, that should scare us silly that this agency is so fearless that when laws prohibit what it does, when public opinion comes out overwhelmingly against it, when, when common decency dictates that you It's because it's a it. mission. It, it's, it's a war. It's got to be carried out to fully federalize the country and link the TSA up with the threat fusion centers for the takeover. And then when you get any medical care, you run through TSA to make sure you're not a terrorist. And they brazenly do it to the heroes of 9-11, the rescue workers first, to be outrageous and set the bar at an incredibly low level. Breaking TSA pat-down bill dies in Texas legislature. A controversial bill to ban intrusive searches by federal airport security officers died in Texas legislature on the final day of a special session today after the House refused to bring it up for consideration. So even though they watered it down to almost nothing, it got killed. And the Republican leader of the Senate killed it the first time, then claimed he was for it. Then the Speaker in the House killed it. This is Rick Perry's specialty. He introduces legislation or says he supports it and then does everything he can to block it. And we talked to Ron Paul about that yesterday. He said that's a favorite tactic now in D.C. It, it's just incredible. Uh, but the fight isn't over. But, but this is the central fight over what are federal goons doing here. They've had TSA drills with Homeland Security in, in four state areas where they shut down uh, major highways. Uh, it's happening everywhere. And the governor two years ago in Tennessee said, you can't do this. You sh you've got the Army out here with TSA running it. They're the boss. And uh, they said, uh, you can't do that. And TSA... And Homeland Security said, take a hike, buddy. John Warner Defense Authorization Act. And now they've got their 10 governor group. Uh, it makes the decisions instead of the states. Oh, well, I have a rural council I go to decide what to do for the states. I have a 10-member governor council. This is how tyranny operates. I, I don't need the, the Congress to say we can have a new war in Libya. I say it isn't a war, and I say the U.N. says I can. I mean, the sky's the limit here because the country has been bankrupt by the mega central banks by design. We're being brought into receivership. Heaven help us. The carbon taxes, all of it. They're creating a new federal green army that will come on your property without warrants. It is hell being released. TSA pat down bill dies in Texas legislature. A controversial bill to ban intrusive searches by federal airport security officers died in Texas legislature on the final day of the special session. House members gave preliminary approval of the Senate passed bill, but fell short of the 120 votes needed to suspend uh, constitutional rules to bring the bill up for a final passage. The vote was 96 to 26. So 96 to 26, not enough. The bill, which was uh, provoked opposition from the Transportation Security Administration, died during the regular session of TSA. Officials, not servants, officials, threatened legal action. But it surged back to life after Governor Rick Perry introduced it on the special session agenda after he was forced to. The bill by Representative David Simpson of Longview had a diehard fan base of large conservative supporters who were rallying behind it to end what they call widespread invasive screening procedures by TSA agents, you mean law-breaking. Dozens of supporters converged inside the Capitol Monday to denounce changes, it wasn't dozens, it was about 250, the legislation they say uh, severely weakened the bill. House Speaker Joe Strauss earlier denounced the bill as a publicity stunt, yeah, the Fourth Amendment, uh, and it just goes on from there. Uh, so there you go, uh, going back to our guest, Becky Akers. Becky, please continue. People put an awful lot of time and effort into getting this bill passed, but I hope 
you're all not so terribly disappointed that you give up the fight. I have to say, I've never really thought legislation is the way to deal with the TSA, and this whole episode gives us a real good lesson in that. Uh, first of all, you're at the mercy of politicians who have consistently shown they have no mercy, okay? It's dependent on their whims, their wills, whether or not they can be bothered to get their sorry butts over to the legislature, which we pay them to attend, Okay, they get how many extra uh, dollars in their paycheck for these special sessions? They're paid to be there, and yet they can't show up to vote last week. So you're, you're at their mercy when we're depending on legislation to protect us from the TSA. But a more important point is that there's already law against the TSA. In fact, there's a law that outlaws, outlaws its very existence. Yeah, I want folks to hear what you just said. There's not just states' rights issues. There's also official oppression molestation. We're going to go over all of it. But uh, again, I say fight on every front. Oh, and, 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 and this whole legislative issue made it a big national issue. So fighting is winning because you simply uh, resist and it draws more attention and lets people know that America isn't just rolling over to Nazi Germany part two. Absolutely. I think that this is a huge shot in the arm for the anti-TSA movement. But I don't know that in practice, had the law passed, I don't think anybody should be upset that it didn't because, first of all, it's already accomplished what it should have. It called attention to the problem. Secondly, the Constitution prohibits exactly what the TSA is doing. And TSA gropes us in direct defiance of the highest law of the land. Had Texas passed this law, it wouldn't have done squat, because if you're going to uh, ignore the Constitution, you're certainly not going to be intimidated by some little state law. So, uh, in fact, the Constitution outlaws the TSA's very existence. There's nowhere that the federal government is given any kind of authority to police aviation, to police transportation, to police us at all. Um, one of the things that we should really be very much afraid of, and one of the reasons TSA has so easily infiltrated not just airports but buses and trains, is because almost all transportation in this country is either outright owned by government, whether at the federal, state, or local levels, or it's so heavily subsidized and regulated it might as well be. The airports are almost always owned by either a city or a, a state commission. So when TSA moves in on them, these guys aren't, aren't going to protest. They're going to say, yeah, thanks. You're taking one of our expenses away from us for having to protect it. We're grateful for that. Um, airlines are the same way. Airlines are, are the, uh, one of the biggest partners for the TSA. They cover for it. You don't see airlines protesting its abuse of their customers. And that's precisely why, because the FAA mandated security for airlines. It has mandated security for airlines since the 1960s, okay? And the regulations under the FAA were just as stupid as they are under TSA, except that the FAA required airlines to pay for all these stupid rules that invented, okay? Remember how you used to get asked what you, whether you packed your own bags? That was an FAA mandate. And the airlines were forced to comply and forced to pay their personnel to harass us like that. So, of course, they object to paying for security. Of course, they're in favor of the TSA because what the TSA did was shift that cost from them to taxpayers. So now the, the federal government is subsidizing yet another airline operating expense. The airlines are completely beholden to the feds. Uh, the, the feds do all kinds of things. When they, they outright subsidize them, they give them tax breaks, they control virtually every aspect of commercial travel. Okay, so it, to all intents and purposes, aviation in this country is already nationalized. And That's right, land of the free, home of the brave. And you, and you break down the fact that when you go in an airport, now they're expanding out to the football games and, and proms, a total violation of the Tenth Amendment, that it's like going down a dark alley with some very dangerous people. You know, the issue here is this is about building an army of miscreants that will roast themselves outside radiation bakers, porno scanners, uh, and who will uh, be happy to take diapers off babies and 95-year-old terminal cancer patients that can hardly walk. Uh, these are a special type of people that they're sifting out and isolating to be their army who enjoy the thuggery. Yes, absolutely. And uh, that, that that really angered me. I don't recall who said it, but somebody was making the point, it might have been Dewhurst, made the point that we can't hold the screeners responsible.
responsible. It's their bosses that this legislation ought to be aimed at. Absolutely not. I mean, just imagine if you walked into your place of employment and your boss called everybody together and said, okay, guys, from now on, any customer walks through that door, I want you sexually assaulting, okay? Near rape, that's what I'm after. I want you poking them. I want you prying them. I want your fingers everywhere they can possibly go. What would you do? Would you pop the guy in the nose and walk out? Of course. That's what any decent human being would do. No screener anywhere, to my knowledge, as far as I have seen any news report, not one single screener quit when the directive came down from Pistol last fall that they were going to grope us, okay? So where is the decency? Where are the people just following orders, which, of course, went out at Nuremberg? You no longer can use that defense. It's been totally discredited. These people are slime and scum. They have no morals. They have no common decency. They don't even have the merest compassion for a 95-year-old woman dying of leukemia. Okay, if they're going to brutalize her like that, what do they do to us? So this idea that they're just doing their jobs and we can't blame them is total hogwash. Well, I'm going to tell a story now I haven't told because it's so insane no one would believe it, but it's on record at Austin Bersham International Airport and I think it may have been a setup. Rob Dew was with me, he even got some of it on videotape and I wasn't going it, to, it's, it's, it, this really happened I, and I think it was a setup. I'm getting off the airplane, I'm walking down the concourse and I'm walking through and some guy gets in my face uh, turned out he was from Chicago waiting and you know, he, he was bigger than I was he was trying to intimidate me and he said you're good looking I want to you know have sex with you and he grabbed my chest and did a you know twister on it It was very painful and, and, and I, knew, I could tell it was a setup so I stood back and I said I'm gonna go get the police and the guy starts laughing going yeah you're good looking baby Rob Dew was already happened to be getting ready to shoot TSA as we walked out with video he had his flip camera almost ready so he started catching it and I said say that again say you just came up and wanted to have sex with me and grab my chest and he said uh, yeah I'll do it again baby and he was like come on do something come on you know with tattoos all over him. and I was like man this is really weird I went and got the police they came they watched the video they talked to him they set him down they said all right Mr. Jones we need to fill out a report we're gonna uh, arrest him right now and uh, we're going to charge, you know, he's, he's going to be taken down, probably charged. We need to have your, you know, license and stuff for court. Do you want to do this? And I just said, no, uh, this is some kind of setup. Uh, and, I, and I said, uh, I said, no, I, I just wanted on record that this guy did that. And I, and I left. But that, but the point is, why would the police arrest, be ready to arrest him for running up and doing this weird setup in the airport and dude's mouth was hanging up while this was up. I was like, what is going on here? And he's like, oh, I want to have sex with you. And then he's like, come on, do something. And it was all, a, it was really, because I guess they were going to, I guess it's kind of like in uh, the movie JFK and those things really happened uh, with um, uh, uh, Jim Garrison where he'd try to go in the bathroom at, a, at an airport and the guy would come in and try to have sex with him. This was the something like that but different. It's like in plain view standing there this guy walks up starts and starts saying oh baby and grabbing my chest and 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 it was very bizarre but the point is they should have uh, uh, arrested the TSA people when they're doing groping. Why were the cops ready to arrest him for groping me, but but not the TSA? Again, it's like two different worlds. It absolutely is, Alex, and there have been examples of screeners who have pawed or assaulted women outside the airport. Now, remember, they've just been doing this for an entire shift. They get outside the airport, and all of a sudden they're arrested for doing what they did inside the airport. So, again, it's, it's exactly the example you just raised. There are two different worlds uh, operating here. And we really can't expect anything else since we've just lost our moral compass with the situational ethics of the 1960s triumphing now that context is all, and rape in an airport done by a, a goon wearing a government badge is not rape. But if he gets outside the airport and he's not wearing his government badge, then it all of a sudden becomes rape. There was a guy in Georgia who was a screener who was arrested for this. He it was feeling women up the whole shift, and then he gets out into the parking lot, and I can't imagine why, but a passenger actually agreed to accompany him off duty. He got out to the parking lot, he continued molesting her, and she reported him. <laughs> it's like, you know, in a I, now, I this is a job that only mentally ill people absolutely. are going to be happy to do. Now, 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 let's talk about the pilots said no, and they had to back off because you trust me with the plane, but 
now some you know, minimum wage level person is going to grope me. And these are grown men. Troops have gotten very upset by this. Uh, I mean, break down uh, what's happening on that front. Yeah, pilots, uh, this goes back to the point I was making before where TSA is an actual danger to us. It's not that it protects us. It, it risks our lives, okay? There were pilots last fall. Now, they have since been exempted from groping. But uh, last fall, they were right in the lines with us, and they were being groped. Uh, many of them were so upset. There's one uh, reported incident of a pilot so traumatized by this molestation. He went home. He, he, he had to call in sick. He went home and threw up in his driveway. Now, imagine a grown man, and, and remember, a lot of pilots come out of the Air Force. They're combat veterans. Okay, we're, we're not talking wimps here. We're talking pretty tough. Crazy. No, it's their public, it, it's their private space. This is like a person who's not a criminal being taken to prison and being groped by the jail guards. It is totally traumatizing to say you have no power, you have no dignity. Uh, something your whole life that you wouldn't let somebody do, it's now being done to you. And I believe the guy at the Austin airport, it was a setup, and that if I would have physically attacked him, that, that they were going to probably try to kill me in the airport. Oh, I don't doubt that. But oh, can you imagine how mad they are at me? Now I may not even be able to fly, or I may have to have cameras rolling the whole time uh, for these setups, and if they assault me, I'm going to have to lay down like Gandhi while they attack because I almost attacked him, and he just, you know, he did it again. He said, come on, and I was just like, oh, and I knew it was a setup, and I just controlled myself, but, I mean, I'm sure that was a government setup. I mean, who knows what they're going to do to me now? You know, they know I'm leading the fight nationwide along with Drudge against them. And we should be on guard against all sorts of things like this. Uh, when you can get a pilot so upset that he's throwing up, do you want that guy at the controls of your plane? The pilot union actually issued a directive to its members saying, you know, assess your mental state after you go through the checkpoint. Are you fit to fly a plane? If not, call in sick and we'll get a replacement for you. But just imagine the danger you're in when the guy at the controls is shaking from rage and, and from uh, the trauma he's just been through of another man groping him, okay? That's just one example of how TSA endangers this. Remember that TSA has actually killed passengers, too. There have been passengers. Uh, there was one man named Rigoberto Alpes. Well, wait, they took the woman behind closed doors and killed her, uh, yeah. who was having a panic attack. She was going to drug rehab. She, tried, she was a professional. She argued a little. They claimed she choked herself with her own handcuffs. Yes, actually... TSA was not directly involved in that. That was the airport cops. That should also scare us. Why do airports have their own police forces? But I do hold TSA morally responsible for killing Carol Ann Gottbaum because they have established such a climate of hysteria at airports that things like that happen. A woman is arrested because she's upset at missing her flight. And Ms. Gottbaum kept screaming, I'm not a terrorist. I'm not a terrorist. Why are you doing this to me? So she was clearly picking up on the fact that... Well, we had the one guy that had a panic attack because he was scared to fly. They killed him. Yes, this is Rigoberto Alpazar. He was a short-term missionary flying back to his home in Florida. He, they, he and his wife had been on a mission to uh, South America. They got back into Miami and were changing planes for the last leg of their flight to their home in Orlando. He was uh, uh, suffering from bipolarism. He had a panic attack, tried to get off the plane without asking TSA's permission. Okay, I bet you didn't know you have to ask TSA's permission. Nobody did. This man simply got up out of his seat and tried to get off the plane as passengers were filing past. There were two air marshals aboard, tragically enough. They followed him out onto the runway and shot him and killed him for no reason, except he wanted to get off the flight. Stay there. Let's talk about more of the deaths on the other side than phone calls. Stay with us. writes for some of the biggest publications uh, in the nation. Becky Akers uh, is our guest, really focusing in on the TSA. We're going to get into some of the health issues with them not changing gloves and the rest of it uh, coming up in the uh, next hour. It's also trains law-abiding citizens to be taken away to the backroom dungeon. All the TSA thieving of the bags. We're going to discuss it all. Uh, but right now, let's go to Ed Maryland. Ed, you're on the air. Welcome. Yeah, oh, thanks, Alex. Uh, watch the show every day. My son and I listen to it as often as we can. Uh, I, I tell you, this whole TSA thing has really got me uh, upset. As a matter of fact, I probably won't be flying until they change uh, change all this. But uh, I just had a uh, 
uh, like a strategy. I don't know uh, when people go through to to be screened. Do they have to have a ticket first? Uh, you know, I've wondered about that, too. Yes, you do have to have a ticket because you can't get there. They're going to ask you at the airport for your ID and ticket before you get to the checkpoint. Now, my question is, and I think I know the answer, but I'm not positive. My question is, with your ticket, you decide not to go through the screening or you're so traumatized or for whatever reason, you cut it short and leave or the TSA throws you out, either one, because it does throw people out occasionally. Um, in that case, you get your money back. I don't know. I, I don't think you do. Um, no, and a lot of times you do get your money back because the airlines understand how traumatic it is. But the other thing is they try to then charge you $11,000 if you get in there and, the, and, and, and you won't go in the microwave scanner. After all, they're killing themselves. Why shouldn't you get a little bit of the same death they're getting? Because it's so they want to grope old ladies and small children so much they're willing to die. So why shouldn't you get groped by it? I mean, they're giving their life up to do this as perverts and pedophiles and power tripping control freaks. Uh, but, uh, you know, the fines and all this, it's all about intimidation. Uh, anything else, caller? Because we're, 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 we're taking calls here of folks. You know, here, here's the deal. Not flying is a great thing to do because it puts pressure on things. But the industries, the, the travel, the hotel, they've already complained for years. They're losing tens of billions a year. Uh, and I appreciate your call. In fact, let's get a, co a comment from Becky. I've seen numbers as high as $20 billion a year lost in tourism and travel and hotels and growing uh, because of the TSA. Yeah, the, the travel industry is very interesting, Alex. You'll see some reports that are touting how uh, this is the busiest year ever for airlines, and they're, they're filling their planes and this, that, and the other. One of the ways they're able to do that is they juggle the figures just like the government does, okay? They are actually losing money. Um, if we had an honest accounting from either the feds or their corporate buddies, the airlines, you'd see that travel has fallen off significantly. That may be a function of the economy and not just the TSA. I wish it were just because of the TSA. It'd be wonderful to think people care that much about their freedom and their rights. But uh, at any rate, yeah, the airline industry is suffering. Um, I think well, yeah, no, they've cut back flights massively, and then they say, oh, but they're all full. Yes, yes, they're all full. Um, so it's it's uh, they do this a lot. They juggle the figures. They said they cook the books. They want to make it look like they're a winner because you don't want to fly with an airline that isn't doing well, right? I mean, that's just kind of human nature. But uh, yeah, but yeah. the hotels, everybody else knows better. We're going to break back in one minute. More of your calls straight ahead. Got some really bad news for folks. AP reporting federal appeals court in Cincinnati upholds President Barack Obama's health care law. Now, you, again, uh, there's courts out there ruling there's no more Fourth Amendment in Indiana. I mean, they, 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 let me tell you, this is a revolution by the criminal political class over America. It's time for 17 the crimes of the TSA. Uh, but uh, we're going to go to some more of your phone calls that then get into the health issues uh, associated with this, the serious uh, health dangers. Uh, who's up next here, John? All right, Kevin in New Jersey, you're on the air. Welcome. Keith in New Jersey, go ahead. Hey, Alex. Um, great to talk to you, first-time caller. Um, thank you. Kudos. Um, you've been instrumental in uh, my awakening. Um, just so I'll keep it real quick. Uh, I just uh, went to fly out on Sunday out of the Philly airport, and, um, <clears throat> you know, I sat there um, for a good 20 minutes, half hour, and watched about 300 people go through. Uh, no one opted out. Uh, everyone went straight through the scanner. You know, I, I got up, and then it was, you know, opt out, opt out. So, you know, um, you know, they took me over to the corner, and, you know, uh, before the guy started, you know, I, I asked him if he, if he was uh, prepared to violate, uh, you know, my constitutional rights. And, you know, from there it started. And, you know, before it got really ugly, you know, I, the guy looked me in the eye, and he couldn't even – you know, he, he couldn't even look me in the eye and tell me that he wasn't violating my rights. So, you know, the bottom line is, um, you are right, Alex. It's time for 1776. I'm sick of this. Um, you know, we Did he check your waivos? Did he squeeze on those? Oh, absolutely. Yes, sir. I didn't even get to that part yet. But, yeah, he, he, did, he absolutely did, you know. And, you know, the whole time he's doing this, you know, I'm saying, you, you know, how can you sit here and do this all day to these people? And he says, hey, man, 
This is just a job. You know, leave me alone. I'm bothering him, you know, talking about the Constitution and pointing out what they're doing. I'm bothering them, you know, and they're, they're standing around. You know, the snake manager comes over with the shifty eyes and, you know, the TSA, you know, they're standing there with their arms folded and they're, they're shaking their head. And, you know, and it's amazing that, you know, people just walk by and, and have no idea what's going on. I'm trying to bring attention. And they're going to gonna lose their pension funds. They're going to lose their property rights, their children. The, I mean, the, the, everybody's going to learn we're going into Soviet Russia here. Uh, but uh, now, now. Uh, how dare you complain before a man, uh, even a woman doing it, you know, when you didn't want her would be upsetting. Uh, now, 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 tell us what he did to the huevos. Uh, he did, you know, he, he explained that, you know, he was just going to use the back of his hand and he pulled out the dirty gloves from his pocket. I work in the healthcare field and, you know, that was something that I pointed out too. And they take their gloves out and they just uh, dash some hand sanitizer. Which is, you know, come yeah, on. It's only to protect him it. from you. He's going to give you all that day's loving. All those people uh, continue. So he's going to give you a little disease now. <laughs> that That's correct. Yeah, so, and, uh, you know, he, I said, regardless, I, I don't care if you use your hand or your elbow. If you touch me there, you know, th it's going to be a problem, and, and I'm going to speak up. And, and that's exactly what he did. You know, he, he ran his uh, hands uh, down the... Uh, you know, uh, my buttocks and uh, also, you know, up my legs. And, you know, uh, it's supposed to be, you know, it says it's going to use the back of the hand, but trust me, y you know they're there. And it's, and you know, it's a sensitive area. But that's freedom to keep you safe from Al Qaeda. Uh, so, how did all this end? Because I want to come back and get our guest take on it. Well, how this all ended is uh, I, I went through and I was actually flying out for a business trip. And uh, how this ended is. Um, I went through security, and uh, now I'm refusing to fly. And, um, you know, it's funny because, you know, I get back to work, and, you know, um, I sit down with my, my boss, and it's like, you know, no, no one even even uh, understands what's going on. And it's like, are you some kind of conspiracy theorist? No, I know. Questioning a man grabbing your genitals is now a conspiracy theory. Questioning, having any opinion... Not wanting to be a slave is a conspiracy theorist, and the police are trained. You need to be arrested and put in a FEMA camp. No, no kidding. The, the, this is it. They're here, folks. The, the takeover's here. Becky, let's get your take loaded phone lines with people abused by the TSA. They just joined us. A fellow in the last five minutes talked about a business trip. He, he works in the medical field. The guy had dirty gloves on, took him out of his pocket, all dirty. Grabbed his genitals, went inside his buttocks, exactly as Jesse Ventura's suit says. I've seen it with just a man running his hand right down between the governor's buttocks, going right up and then checking. Let me see what those are. Mm-hmm, okay. Uh, state reps in Texas said they were bruised. They were, I mean, light pressure hurts. They actually check and squeeze. This is... You wonder how folks in Nazi Germany lined up, stripped down naked, got marched in, you know, to be uh, murdered because they were taught to comply. And Americans, most Americans would, I've seen the photos and, and film of women going into pits with their babies and then being gunned down. And the Soviets did that too. And most Americans would, because it's an officer, they would, I mean, I'm not joking here. Uh, talking to syndicated columnist and journalist Becky Akers. Becky, do you disagree with the statement I just made? <laughs> No, in fact, I think you're right on target. I am constantly amazed at the senseless, cruel, barbaric orders Americans will follow. Uh, I will never forget having a conversation with one elderly Christian gentleman, and he was telling me very proudly how he's never broken a law and he obeys anything the government tells him to do. And I said, his, his wife was suffering from Alzheimer's. I said, so you're telling me that if, if federal agents surrounded your house this, tomorrow and told you to put your wife out for collection, they're taking her away to a nursing home because he was very proudly taking care of him himself right then. I said, you, you would hand her over? Absolutely. Didn't hesitate. No, no, they think America is about being a slave. Yes. yes. Oh, oh, I know. These are very dangerous people, and they're everywhere, and that's who the government hires. I bet money that guy worked for the government. Yes. <laughs> oh, he had. <laughs> Um, but uh, this, this is a horrible tendency, and it's completely alien to the generations that went before us. These, what, the, what did you think of the guy saying that when he went back to the medical firm he works at and said, I can't fly anymore, they called him a conspiracy theorist. It, it's admitted they're grabbing the genitals, but so, now, so now having an opinion 
something yeah. alien in all of human history got lining you up grabbing your genitals now to even question is a conspiracy theory i'm always amused at how the corporate media phrases it the same way you know um some passengers may object to the TSA's pat-downs for enhanced security. No, tell us what it really is. Many people object to being raped. That's, that's the way to phrase it. Okay, the, the corporate media just cooperates and makes out that we're some kind of wackos or something, when actually well, anyone in his right mind objects to being bruised. Well, uh, look, I mean, all the lobbies for the... For the hotels, the rent cars, all of it. You know it's hurting tourism and travel and business. And, yeah. and my wife and children will not get on your planes. And you're losing that business. And it, it just continues from there. Uh, let's take another call. we got to move quick here. Russell in California. Russell, you're on the air. Hi, Alex. First time caller, long time listener. Um, I'm doing a little research. And I was wondering if perhaps you and Becky could touch on the topic of uh, the TSA and the Trusted Traveler program just being a way to kind of um, initiate... Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. In fact, that was my next point, biometrics. They always meant, they said they'd do this eight years ago, uh, to make you have a card and biometrically face scan and thumbprint. And so they're torturing us with this. Then they're going to offer the card, which then you'll need to buy a gun, anything it's a whole new system where they approve you to have a job to buy a gun no judge no jury just a magic list but they admit they're going to keep the groping they're still going to call you out now just not everyone and so people are now going to accept the federal id card becky yeah that's exactly what's going on it's a way for them to get even more control over us but they're selling it as oh now you can you can have more convenience when you fly and alex going back to your point before about how Mer americans are just slaves i'm constantly amazed by that too it's like because you're it's a little more convenient you'll give the government this much more power over you whatever it may be whether it's secure flight or something else and by the way don't you love that name trusted traveler like they'll trust us <laughs> you know, when they they consider us all terrorists, but they trust us. Um, so it's, it's more normally known as secure flight, which also is very Orwellian. But at any rate, it's exactly what you're saying. It's an attempt by the TSA to tie together all our behavior. You're going to have to submit tax returns to qualify for this thing. So what happens when you get to the airport and you and the IRS are having a dispute? Are you arrested on the No, spot? no, they, and they admit, you're not just saying this could happen. That's what this is. Oh, no, that, that is, that's fact. No that buy, no sell. Is. This is, this is, you've got to have that approved card tied to your face scan to literally drive a car. Yes. Uh, oh, my God, this is so incredible. This is such a diabolical plan. That's why we obsess on this TSA issue, because uh, and we have the documents, as you said, and, and, and now they're admitting Yes. That it's going to be on the streets of America. People are like, how did you know they'd be on the streets? Because they said they were going to do this. Yes. Uh, that's a fascinating point about TSA. It lies about everything all the time, except about its plans for the future to take over all of American society. For some reason, it's very upfront about that. And it has long threatened to go beyond airports to control all aspects of travel. Well, it's all about America. just brazenly throwing it in your face. And now they're getting ready with their LCIA to to attack sports stadiums, shopping malls, the telescreens are going in, saying spy on your neighbors. I mean, America screen saying watch everyone, you know, goons everywhere. Now they have Boy Scouts with the TSA nationwide at parades and the little kids with their arms folded looking at grandma. I mean, this is the Stasi society. Uh, Alex in Kansas, you're on the air. Hey guys, thanks for taking my call. Uh, long time listener, Planet TV member, appreciate what you're doing. I have a 15 year old daughter that was with the traveling choir uh, going from Kansas to Seattle. Got to the airport, typical 15 year old not paying attention. She just walked through the body scanner and uh, they promptly, you know, single her out. Tell her to go back through the scanner. Oh, yeah, that's she the, said, oh, I gotta stop you. That's the other big lie. They're always saying to everybody, um, we uh, just do the scanner. We won't grope you. Everywhere I've flown, everyone that goes through the scanner, and in, in all, all the flights I've done, everyone who goes through the scanner is then called over for a grope down as well. They say, well, we only scan some people. They admit their plan is to scan everybody. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, please tell us. So a pedophile singled out your daughter. You know, she's like, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to walk through that. They instructed her, I don't care, stand still. 
went through the scanning process, it apparently malfunctioned. So instead of pulling her to the side behind a curtain, in front of all of her peers, the TSA lady grabs her and says, you know, we're going we're gonna to do the, the search now. It's no big deal. Uh, the media is making a big deal out of it. And then proceeded to feel up every single crevice of her body. I am outraged as a parent that I can't protect my daughter. It's, I need help from you and the listeners and people to find... No, no, hold on, go. Alex, Alex, hold on. You're not supposed to get upset. Getting upset by this is a conspiracy theory. Now having emotions is a sign you're an extremist. You, you, It is abnormal to not want some uh, uh, woman who likes little girls uh, who works there for that enjoyment to do this. Uh, sir, this is freedom, and the government is trying to protect you when they got Mutalib on the plane uh, and protected him, how dare you be, cons of course, I'm being sarcastic here to illustrate uh, this, but, but, uh, sir, you need to sue him. You need to sue him personally. Doesn't matter what happens with the suits. We need to punish all these people. Becky, uh, any comments on Alex starting to break down, having a normal response? Alex, if you were at an airport and you had arms with you, would they ever touch your daughter? This is exactly why the TSA is taking away weapons. It has nothing to do with protecting uh, other passengers from Al-Qaeda. It has to do with protecting the TSA's agents as they rape little girls, okay? Um, you, can, you are completely at their mercy, not just in the checkpoint line, but once you're on board the plane, TSA agents have actually boarded planes, taken passengers off. You're at their mercy when the flight lands and you're disembarking from the plane. TSA has actually set up checkpoints points and searched people coming off flights as well as before they get on. And there's not a thing you can do about it because the only weapon you have left are your fingernails. Well, when I flew out of Austin, now they don't just have people randomly at the gate searching you again. There was a guy bugging his eyes out hatefully, and I started looking at him right back in the eyes, and he turned away and got a little smile on his face. This is some type of degenerate weirdo who loves psychically feeding on people, bugging his eyes out at a gate because he's been taught, you know, that, oh, uh, you know, he is magic and can tell if you're a terrorist or not. Well, his, his terrorist bosses of the government that are staging all this. Alex, you started breaking down. Finish up. I'm sorry. Is, I, I called Kansas and Missouri um, ACLU, and their response is, well, we're not handling these uh, complaints at the local level. You need to call the New York office, which is a black hole. They tell you to go to a website, fill out a complaint form. No, no, no. They're there to make you think there's opposition. They're all they're, they're for total gun bans, sir. They, they, they love it. Not, not their rank and file, but the leadership. Uh, comments, Becky, on that. Yeah, I don't have much faith in ACLU and a bunch of these other organizations that are protesting against the TSA. I think one of the best lessons we can take away from your story, Alex, is just don't fly. Uh, don't go near an airport. But above all, don't let your kids go near an airport. Uh, you, entering an airport, you're pretty much asking for it. You know, it's like these these stories have been out there for a long time. We're all aware of what's going on at airports. It's and this like is all acclamations. As soon as it's going to be on the streets, they're going to pull you and your wife and kids out and start running the pedo drill. And uh, then all hell's going to break loose. They're trying to start a revolution, Becky. Yes, I, I actually don't hold much hope of getting rid of TSA without a revolution. Uh, there's just too much power and too much money at stake. We can see how fiercely the feds cling to that power. We have, a, we have a mafia running the government. Every yeah. mafia-run city, Chicago, New York, L.A., wants total gun bans. Mafia, well, first thing a robber does when they come in a bank is say, hands up, and they take the security guard's gun. They are taking our guns. They are criminals. They are conscious of it. People need to grow up and realize this is conscious evil. Oh, absolutely. It's calculated. It's deliberate. It's being done to subjugate us. And there's really no other point to it but that. Alex, freedom isn't free. What your daughter went through, now at least you know what's going on. God bless you. Let's do one more segment with our guests. Try to jam, jam in Aaron, Mike, Marks, too. i got to get into all the other news, though, but let's see if Becky can hold over with us. What an amazing lady fighting this scum. Ladies and gentlemen, now if you don't like your daughter being grabbed, you heard the guy earlier. Grabbing his genitals, you're a conspiracy theorist. Sure, when they were going in the pants, and they still are, and actually now in the underwear, like Miss USA, they actually get in there and they squeeze. I mean, I've been there watching Jesse Ventura, they didn't do it to me, actually go up and go, mm, mm. they actually lift. And they, women, I don't want to get graphic, but you know, have the time of the month. They say, what's that? 
They have to go behind closed doors, take their pants off, show them. I mean, it's about forced inoculation. The feds admit they've wanted forced inoculation for a long time. They tried it with the Health Emergency Powers Act. They tried to get cops to train for forced inoculation. They got cops under federal grants taking blood at checkpoints now. Europe's already started it. This is about invading your space because normal law-abiding good people, you're like, you know, you don't even like a cop asking you a question when you're walking down the street. Um, I remember one time I was walking to the store. I was in an apartment. It was like 50 yards away to get some Gatorade and stuff. And cops pulled up and said, let's see your ID. And I said, I'm, I just live right there. And they got jumped out and freaked out. And I said, do whatever you're going to do, man. I live right there. I'm getting some Gatorade. I said, did something just happen? They're like, no, we want to see your ID. And I'm just like, well, it's in that apartment right there. And they held me and went and checked that I live there. But, but the point is... That's nothing compared to I'm going in your pants. You know, I could take endless calls on this, and, and we've got them here, Becky, but you've covered so many great points. Your reportage is all over the place. Becky Akers, TSA, you'll find the new stuff every day if you search that. Uh, but I want to go to uh, all these other callers here. We'll have to go to them after you're gone, but um, have to cover some other news. But other points we haven't gotten to that you think are important about uh, the total sexual assault system. Well, one of the things that we should all keep in mind, again, is that the reason the TSA remains in power, remains in airports groping us, is because there isn't mass revolt and because there is this acceptance. Many Americans swallow the propaganda that it protects us. So every chance you get, educate your friends and neighbors. Tell them, no, it doesn't protect us. It actually endangers us. It's killed passengers, Rigoberto Alpazar and Caroline Gottbaum. It spreads disease with its filthy gloves. Uh, for years, uh, we've been walking barefoot on airport floors, and there have been independent studies done showing the bacteria and viruses that cluster on airport floors. You're picking all that up. You're taking it home on your socks. You're spreading it over your shoes. Uh, any, you know, you slide your foot into your shoe, the new pair of socks. My dad is a dentist, okay? He would be criminally charged under a call by the, by the state of Texas medical board and the health department if he didn't change gloves multiple times during each procedure when he changes even a piece of equipment or goes out of the room he's supposed to. I mean, doc, medical doctors, nurses know this. This is a crime. They're not testing the radiology. It's all about lawless power grabbing by a bunch of jack booted scum, and I've had it. You know why I cover this so much? Because I'm afraid of what I'll do, folks. I'm sick of it. I want to fix things peaceably, but I will not do this. I will not put up with it. Alex, if I can just add an amen to that and also say... Ah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Don't fly, stay away from airports because we have got to zap the TSA now before it gets much worse and it is going to get worse. The best way to zap them is to deprive the airlines... That's right, they want to slowly revenue. bankrupt the airlines and nationalize them. We've got to bankrupt them now to have the confrontation. Absolutely. That's, I don't see any other way of getting rid of the TSA short of open... Guns and firing revolution. So well, and we, we don't want that to happen, and we want to do every avenue as the founders did, because, ladies and gentlemen, the point is, country liberty is rare. Tyranny is, is, is the norm. We know what this is. We know it's cold-blooded. We know it's premeditated. We know it's evil. We know it's evil. We know it's wrong, Becky. Yes, absolutely. And I have to say the commercial boycott works. This is what the founders did. You may remember the import-export agreements from high school history. That's what was going on. The founders refused to buy anything from British merchants, figuring that if they starved the British merchants, those very influential, powerful men would put pressure on the British administration. So they started the Stamp Act that if it wasn't made in Britain, they came in your house and gave you tickets for everything, uh, charging you for anything made in the colonies. That's right, and so the founders just refused to buy anything from Britain. It didn't work because the revolution interfered first, but we can use the same tactic. Don't fly. Don't give your money to resort. Look, the pot-bellied social engineers, psych warfare chiefs, have written all this down. They've planned it all. They think we're going to win. We've got to keep resisting, 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 and we're going to win. Becky Akers, uh, do you you have an individual website or just all the big papers you write for? No, I just, uh, I figured there are so many blogs out there already. The last thing I need to do is start another one. So. Well, you're very eloquent and we love your fire and your passion and we're all in this together and God bless you. I wish we had uh, more women like you and certainly more men like you. So thank, thank you. you so much, Becky Akers. Thank you. It's been an honor and pleasure. Honor to talk to you.